You hear that heater dying, don't you? It lets out one last breath and goes silent, like a war engine collapsing in a frozen desert. Lights out. Phone dead. Outside, the city freezes like a fish left on ice. You're not watching a movie. You're living inside a terrible scene directed by the weather. A winter blackout isn't inconvenient. It's a physics problem. Heat loss, rising humidity, water expanding as it freezes, and humans fighting entropy. This scenario doesn't give you heroes. It gives you decisions. The right choice keeps you alive. The wrong one costs you your life. Step 1. Choose your fortress. You don't heat the whole house. The idea of heating every room is wasted energy and a gamble with your life. You heat one room. A small room. A heat box. A space you can seal, preserve warmth, and protect humans. Find the room with the fewest windows. Bathroom, dressing room, or a tiny bedroom in the center of the house is a gold ticket. The fewer gaps in the door, the better. Windows? Seal them. Window frames? Seal them. Use towels, blankets, old clothes, trash bags, tape. You don't need aesthetics. You need a low heat transfer coefficient. You don't need vacuum level sealing. You just need to slow the airflow. This is the real physics. Still, air is the cheapest insulation you own. The layer of trapped air between blankets blocks heat better than a thick single layer of fabric. Make multiple air layers by stacking blankets, sheets, clothes. When you sit, avoid touching the cold floor directly. Sand, carpets, cardboard, yoga mats, stacked clothes, anything that stops conduction. Step 2. Turn your body into a mobile furnace. Your body is a 98.6 degree factory. It burns calories to make heat. You must keep that heat close. Layering is the principle. Not one big puffy jacket. Many thin, loose layers that trap air. Moisture wicking base. Insulating mid-layer. Wind blocking outer layer. A hat is your best investment. The head loses heat fast. Two pairs of socks. Gloves. A scarf. Wool over cotton. Wet cotton is the enemy. Sit inside blankets. Wrap blankets. Crawl into a sleeping bag if you have one. Combine humans' shared body heat works like synchronized heaters. Pets go in the middle. Staying dry is the rule of life. Sweat is a heat thief. Adjust layers when moving. Remove layers when you're hot to avoid moisture. Now comes the part most people get wrong. The part where a small mistake turns into a big fire, or worse, carbon monoxide in the very room you chose to survive. Step 3. Safe heat. There's no room for, let's see what happens. Only physics and data. A candle doesn't heat a room. One candle produces about 80 watts. That means lighting 20 candles is still like a weak, dying light bulb. But candles are useful. They create points of light, a sense of safety, and if placed in a tin can, become a mini stove. Mini gas stove? Only use it with ventilation. Never use it in a closed room. Carbon monoxide doesn't warn you. It has no color, no smell, and it kills fast. If you have an indoor safe gas heater, it works, but place it near a window and crack it open a little. Yes, it lets heat escape, but it saves your life. Best are passive heat sources. Hot water bottles. Rice sock heater. Chemical hand warmers or warm water bottles under blankets like a heat battery. Water retains heat better than air. A hot water bottle can keep warmth for hours. If you have an electric hot water tank, open it immediately when power goes out, the hot water inside is a life asset. Pour into bottles, wrap in socks or t-shirt to avoid burns, and place close to your body. Step four, warm the air you breathe. Cold air doesn't just hurt your lungs. It drains heat from your body faster than any surface. Every time you inhale a negative 10 degrees Celsius breath, your body must burn energy to raise it to 37 degrees Celsius. You don't see it, but your body feels it clearly like it's bleeding heat. The solution isn't technology. 
not some fancy device, but a technique used by people who survive blizzards, pre-warming the air before it reaches your lungs. Wrap a scarf around your mouth. Cover your nose. Create a small space, a pocket of warm air from your own breath. Just a few centimeters of fabric, but enough to reduce heat loss significantly. Your breath is warmer than you think. It's a tiny furnace you carry in your chest. And when trapped behind a layer of fabric, it becomes a microclimate protecting you from the air that wants to kill you. Remember, the cold doesn't only attack your skin. It attacks from the inside out. Every wrong breath is an invisible cut into your life energy. And in the darkness of winter, energy is the time you have left. Warm your breath. Warm your life. Step 5. Protect the pipes. And trust me, a burst pipe is worse than shivering yourself to death. Frozen pipes are ticking bombs. Water expands when it freezes, breaking metal or PVC. And when thawed, it tears through your house. Don't let it happen. Open a faucet to a tiny trickle. Moving water freezes slower. If pipes are in cabinets, open cabinet doors to let warm air in. Step 6. Set up heat cycles. You cannot keep the room warm all the time. You don't need to. You just need to maintain life-sustaining temperature swings. 25 minutes of candles, 45 minutes off. 20 minutes of heater, 60 minutes off. Heat water and place under blankets replace bottles every 2-3 hours. Each cycle is a thermal plan. Keep your breathing steady. Your body is the most efficient heater. Keep it dry, keep it lightly active, keep it calm. Step 7. Food. In the cold, your body is a furnace. And a furnace needs fuel. The colder it gets, the more calories you burn. So you eat more than usual. Snacking won't save anyone. You need high-calorie foods. Beans, chocolate, peanut butter, canned meat, nuts, protein bars. The fridge is dying. The freezer is slowly thawing. Time is the greatest enemy. Best to eat perishable items first. Milk, eggs, fresh vegetables, cooked meat. Then move to frozen food. If it's below freezing, you can use the outdoors as a new freezer. Place frozen food outside, wrapped properly. Keep animals away. Finally, dry goods and long-lasting canned food. Rice, noodles, hardtack, beans, long shelf life cans. Many items can be eaten without cooking. If cooking is necessary, go outside. Use a camp stove, indoor safe mini gas stove with a window slightly open. Do not use a gas stove inside. One careless minute end of your survival story. Step 8. Light. Darkness is more dangerous than you think. Tripping, cutting yourself, candle fires, all hazards. Flashlights, headlamps, battery lanterns, glow sticks used to navigate. Strategy. Candles when sitting still. Flashlights when moving. Out of batteries? A glass jar plus cooking oil plus improvised wick from an old t-shirt, shoelace, or paper towel. Pour oil into the jar, wick, soaked, leave one inch above surface. Light it. You now have a crude lamp that burns for hours. Principle. Oil equals fuel. Wick equals capillary action. Ancient but effective. Step 9. Communication. Isolation kills hope faster than the cold. Phone dead, cell towers down, internet a luxury memory. If you have a hand crank radio, now is the time to use it. Tune in. Listen to local news. Find warming shelters. Not prepared? Use phone for emergencies only. Turn off Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, all apps. Save every minute of battery. Car can give a small boost, but running it in a garage? Never. Safety comes first. Most important, your own two feet. Check on neighbors especially elderly, vulnerable people. Share information, food, warmth. Survival is a team sport. And then, a faint flicker. Generator hums back. Grid comes alive. The furnace growls back to life. You survived. You did not panic. You did not poison yourself. You did not freeze. 
What did you learn? You don't need a fancy bunker. No prepper fantasy. Just knowledge, planning, and adaptability. That's it. You beat the cold, beat chaos, beat your own fear. Welcome to the new world, where survival isn't fighting zombies. It's fighting the cold, the desolation.